I've got a couple of packages here, but uh, no guarantees on the audio because there's a ridiculous thunderstorm going on outside. Not sure if you just heard it right there. That was uh, thunder. So let's quickly do this mailbag. So first things first, I need to get these two big ones off the bench. They are absolutely huge. Um, I've actually got some of these before but they came on sale recently. So I'm gonna open one on camera. I'm gonna open the other one off camera because they're both the same. Yeah. So this is a power strip, uh, a big one in fact. I think there's 12 outlets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I think it's about 3 feet long. Um, they were $15 Canadian at a retailer called Prime Cables. Um, Mono price, I think, is the American equivalent, but you can get these at Princess Auto slash Craigslist and stuff, Craigslist, I meant um, Harbor Freight. Uh, type thing, but when they go on sale, that's when you need to buy them because normally these things would have cost me something like uh, 40 50 bucks each, maybe even 30 bucks. But 15 bucks on sale now that's a good deal. Um, some of you might know, and some of you might just find out eventually, that I have a new workbench uh, set up where I'm gonna need some power strips so. There they are. Quite standard, but uh, yeah, when you need them, you need them. These have a six foot cord and they come with mounting hardware. And um, well, when you see the new workbench, you'll see these guys on it. That last one wasn't that interesting, um, except for if you really needed some, I would just remind you to get some. This one here should be a lot more interesting. So May 10th to May 31st. $3.69, nice cents, and eleven oh six. So there's two items in here. It's a, it's a twofer. Oh, it's, got, it's another one of these that has labels on the inside. Okay, that one's okay. That one's okay, nice. Both labels uh, downwards. So let's open this one. Okay, pretty neat. Oh, yeah, that is pretty neat. That's one. Let's open this one. This one would be the $11 one. Oh, ho. oh, another one. Okay, so let's zoom in and take a look at these things. Try not to cry because these things are terminal. This is 20 pieces of these uh, four pin terminal blocks. So there's four positions. They have a Phillips head and they are through hole. They're for um, PCB mounting. I don't think they fit in a standard breadboard. Do I have one laying around? No, I don't have one immediately here but I don't think this is the right pin pitch. But anyways, if you need a screw terminal, you typically won't use a breadboard. So I am planning some projects. Maybe you saw in the previous mailbag with the uh, fuses. Well, this is for that project as well and for stocking up in the shop. So there we go. And that kind of goes along with these guys. These are fork terminals. And I bought these because they do not have any insulation. So I can use uninsulated crimp, like so. But I want these to fit inside here. Oh no, they do not. They don't, they don't fit. No! This is, uh, this is disappointing. Okay, so they don't fit inside here. Um, let me go get something else they're supposed to fit inside of. This is my Banggood electronic load and it's not looking... No! Dang it! <laughs> so that was supposed to fit 
inside there and inside there. Um, great. Do they at least fit on terminal posts? And by terminal posts, of course, I meant binding posts. Oh no, they do, they don't, they're too small for binding posts. They are too big for screw posts. Oh no, good thing this was only uh, three bucks and something. Because I've got 200 of them. Well, how do we drown our sorrows with having the first item being kind of boring and the second item not fitting into the third item or whatever, vice versa? Well, we've got this one here. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that it's not another boring one because it says underwear, gray, medium. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, this was sent to my P.O. box, so I really don't know what it is. There's also no price on it because of that. So here's hoping it's not just gray underwear. Okay. I mean, it doesn't sound like underwear. Okay, I actually know what this is. I was prompted. This is a digital multimeter kit. So it's something that you assemble yourself. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's neat. Look, they've got the, the sort of tray. And this is the case. Some reflective tape in there. Looks like the display is taped in. So yeah, this is a, a DIY multimeter kit. Um, this was kindly offered to me. Huh, neat. Um, and the plan is to assemble this and then put it through the Kaiweets multimeter gauntlet. Doesn't seem like there's that many parts to it. I'm not not sure like there's these ooh there's a current shunt let's zoom in to take a look at this you guys need to yell at me when you can't see because uh, it's sometimes really hard for me to tell because I'm looking at a screen that is like about I don't know about that big and it's actually like this way it's very hard to see but anyways so here is a bunch of resistorbs couple of looks like five percent yeah point point five I'm not believing that's point five percent one percent maybe point five I don't think so five percent uh, some capacitors there is surprisingly little I guess to make a multimeter work uh, I got zebra strip here that pink stuff got a fuse which is good fuse holders you got these uh, four millimeter sort of barrels. I guess the four millimeter barrels will go in there and then they'll go over with a length of wire onto here. I don't know, from there to there. And then gonna need a nine volt. Got a battery clip with a nine volt in there, trimmer capacitor. Maybe they'll make me, maybe they'll make me calibrate this and I'll just calibrate it with my, you know, precision instruments I've been gathering and then this thing will be one of the most pre precise multimeters I have I mean it could give Kai Wheats a run for its money if you know the calibration is done by me I guess because if you calibrate your stuff with the same equipment that you use to test stuff well that's kind of cheating isn't it we'll figure it out cool so yeah thank you uh, circuit pop for sending me this. This is actually quite interesting. I'm curious to see how it's going to work and I'm curious to see um, if it's actually going to be any good at all. Uh, but for those of you that are just looking for something to do for fun, 
Um, this could be a good candidate for you too because you get to build a kit and then you have your, you know, a second multimeter out of it. Pretty neat. Did I manage to put together a interesting episode? I sure hope so. Um, but if not, this last one might be real interesting too. Um, this one is actually from Owan. Um, probably heard of them before. They make, uh, I feel like they're in the same sort of category as um, Rigel or something like that. They make sort of um, really good test equipment, but not like lab grade. Actually, I do think they have some lab grade stuff, but I know they're lower end stuff. Um, this here is right in the middle. I contacted them because they have some interesting stuff. I wanted to know if they would like to collaborate. They said um, they can send me this thing, which will be interesting to look at. But they said that in order for me to get some more stuff, I have to send it back. And honestly, uh, I don't know if it'll be, I don't know if it'll be worth it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, I kind of want to deal a little bit like, uh, a little bit like Linus Tech Tips has where he can uh, pull out old equipment to keep testing with. And honestly, um, this is a USB oscilloscope, so it might be quite difficult to do a review, you know, within a couple, you know, a couple weeks. I'm going to try anyways, but, ooh. So yeah, this is the VDS uh, 6102A. Um, it is a two-channel oscilloscope. It is also a function generator, and it has Wi-Fi. I believe it has, yeah, it has Wi-Fi. So, this is supposed to be, looking at the specs, it's supposed to be a really nice unit. So first and foremost, it's ruggedized, it's got rubber bumpers. What does uh, Dave Jones say? Rubber baby buggy bumpers, something like that? Um, it's got two outputs, or two inputs I should say, channel one, channel two. And the multi, I believe that is where the function gen uh, spits out from it, but it also is a synchronization port and all sorts of things like that. Very weird that this is black metal, like anodized, instead of shiny. And then there's that external, uh, the calibration port, 3.3 volts. Another cool thing about this is you know it's been made fairly recently, because it has USB Type C, it has a USB Type A, has a RS-232, I don't know, net, no, not RS, but network anyways port and a power port there. Pretty neat. Let's see, it comes with a one of these weird um, CD-ROM type things. I don't know of anyone with a CD drive and I certainly don't have one. Comes with some oscilloscope probes as per usual. That's pretty good. Yeah, this thing is supposed to be able to do like uh, I think it's 100 megahertz, so it's actually faster than the Rigel. But I think it's still only one gig sample per second. So these probes look actually pretty nice. Cords very flexible. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Come with the color bands already on them. What does a little hook point look like? Okay, pretty decent. Feel smooth. It's got just an IEC cable that plugs into, I guess it's this guy. This guy is a, either that's 5 volts or 8.5 volts. I'm not sure, like it has to be, it has to be 8 volts, it has to be 5 volts I mean, right? Because it's like a USB scope. But actually, you know what, I, now that I think about it, this is not common to come with a USB scope. Hey, I need one of these. BNC to BNC. Very nice. And USB-A to USB-C cable. I have to say, like, this is, uh, I don't feel like this is a bottom of the barrel product. Like, not that it is, but I'm saying, I feel like instead of giving you the usual stuff that comes in uh, fairly low-priced 
oscilloscopes because this thing's not that expensive. I feel like all the stuff is a little bit higher quality, which is good. It's a good thing. All right. I guess I can see what happens when I plug this into the uh, computer and see if it recognizes it automatically or if I really need this or I have to download some software. Um, I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I should plug this into my Wi-Fi, um, but it is pretty neat. And yeah, the big reason for agreeing to this device is because I have that Handtech oscilloscope that I'm almost ready to do a full review on. And I think at some point I want to compare the price to performance ratio of this compared to that Handtech. Owen doesn't actually know that's what I plan on doing, but um, either way, this will get its own video as well. Uh, let me see how much of a pain in the butt this will be to set up. If it's not a pain in the butt, then hey, um, okay, more points to them. Well, that was a bit more faffing around than I wanted to do. Um, so on one hand, this CD had absolutely everything I needed to get going. On the other hand, the website did not. So I had to go find my old laptop, put this CD in, copy everything onto a USB drive, put the USB drive into my computer. But now literally the USB-C is connected, the power brick is connected, and I have the multi-output um, just out onto the channel one here. Um, I went, I opened up their software that was on here, uh, which looks pretty good, I have to say. I set up the uh, waveform, the function generator, uh, like such, and then I just hit the auto button on the top right of the screen, and bippity boopity, here we go, that's the result. So it looks like uh, it's a very clean sine wave, which is really nice. There's no jitter really to speak of. Uh, and so like the experience is positive once I got everything installed. I just wish that um, this software would be on their website. So I will email them about that and let you guys know in the comments or something uh, how that went. I'm sure, I mean, they seem pretty reasonable. I'm sure they're just gonna put it up in due time. But yeah. Stick around for the first look of this thing. Ooh, this is nice and warm. If you have a cat, it's probably going to lay on this thing. And if you want to see a full review, let me know in the comments below so I'll know to prioritize it. And so this gaggle of Googled goods is today's mailbag. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Owan and to Circuit Pop for sending me stuff and a very special thanks to my Patreon patrons who support me financially and allow me to make uh, good decisions like buying these things. And they also allow me to do the bad decisions like buying these things. I'll find a use for them, I guess. For the rest of you, if you want to support me without directly donating, you can use my affiliate links in the description below. You can also go check out the people that send me stuff, these companies. When you go click links and go buy their stuff, that incentivizes them to send me more stuff so I can make more videos for you. But anyways, if you're here and you're watching, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.